Let's -a go. Well, get ready, superhero fans. We have gotten My Hero Academia, or Japanese translation, Boku no, no Hero, episode number eight, review. Now, this episode... This episode... Right, now, when it comes to this episode, it was a really good introduction to the other characters, the other students, I should say, in their quirks, which was actually really cool. And, not to mention, I really did like the overall, um, when it comes to this character, uh, or this female, I believe she's, like, a really smart person. Like, I think her power is, like, knowledge or something like that, because she reads, like, a lot of books and shit like that. Her name is Momo, I can't really pronounce that as well, it's, like, ya Yao, ya Momo. I'm just gonna call her Momo. Fuck it. It's easier, well, whatever, I don't feel like butchering names. Whatever. So, Momo pretty much just says that, well, technically, the hero team should have lost because, well, technically, they really, I mean, in reality, you know, using a destructive attack um, without even realizing, God forbid, there could have been, like, civilians in that building or whatever, that could have caused some problems. And for that reason, it was a pretty reckless move. However, because it was for training, it makes sense, you know, for that. Because they weren't really thinking of that. They were just thinking of this as their training mission in order to actually pass and succeed. Which makes sense. Even All Might actually applaud Momo for her smart genius. So, you know, yeah, you know, I actually agree with that. You know, while it was pretty cool that um, Izuku, or I'm just going to call him Deku. Like, you know, I was going to, you know, new, new word Deku. When Deku actually used... You know, uh, his, uh, um, his smash. Oh my god, when he used that, yo, I forgot the body. Oh, that was hype, though. Last week was hype at that building. However, though, he has a point. Oh, I'm sorry, she has a point. Because, think about it, if that would be the case, most people would have died from that. So, it would pretty much make sense for, you know, for that to not occur. However, because it was a training mission, you know, again, they weren't really thinking that. So anyways, though, while the rest of the uh, exam was actually going on, like the actual test was actually going on, we get to, to the other characters and their little, you know, villain hero team. We see the ice dude. I love this dude. I love this dude already. I love his powers. Shoto Todoroku. I, Todoroki, sorry, Todoroki. I like this guy. The the blue eye thing, like when he does like his freeze, uh, his freezing uh, powers, reminds me so much. And I don't know if you guys caught this. I'm pretty sure you guys have. If you were guys are big fans of Batman, you guys would catch the reference of the fucking glowing red eye, looking like on um, some Mr. Freeze shit from Batman the Animated Series. So I swear to God, it's got that same reference with that same red glowing eye as Mr. Freeze from Batman the Animated Series. Now I, I'm pretty sure I wasn't the only one thinking of that. That was actually really cool. I like that ability a lot. And uh, we also get introduced to this other character. Who um, has these like wing like abilities and parts of the body is actually um, we act as like a communication or like um, like some kind of like intel device like you know like you know where the enemy is gonna be like it's like three talking structures of the muscle of the wings and I'm like the fuck he's weird his name is Mizoto Suji it's kind of weird. Then we got this one dude who has some kind of like long tail ability. I don't know what that's about. Mashiro, Mashiro or whatever. And then we got this one dude which is like Great Boy. Which I'm going to call him Great Boy. I know it's supposed to be some kind of like bomb thing or little grenade bomb things in this air or something like that from what I've been told from someone. His name is uh, Minoru Minita. Or I'm just going to call him Minoru. Like this dude is a massive purr. Like you can obviously tell. He's got great hair. And I believe from what I've been hearing from people, like, his hair has some kind of, like, explosive little grenade bombs or some shit like that. Like, little pop rock bombs or some shit like that from what people have told me who are fans of the series. Um, you can tell he's a major pro, especially when he was getting a glimpse of, like, Momo's ass. That was actually really funny. And then Momo just catches him off guard. Then we got Fumikage Tokoyami. Yo! This dude looking like the fucking Raven right here. I love his costume design. I don't know anything about his quirk, though. We didn't really see much of his quirk. But he looks fucking cool. I like this dude. He looks badass as hell. He also reminds me a lot of, like, Falco from fucking Star Fox. But in reality, 
That ain't Falco. That ain't Falco. Okay, if you guys Smash Brothers reference, you guys will get that. But anyways, he also looks like the Emperor's Crow design from like Toriko or something, which is actually really nice because Toriko is the greatest. Then we got Mina, um, Mina Hashioto, I believe her name is, which is like this acid, um, this acid-looking alien chick or whatever. Which she, you know, she's pretty cool. Uh, she looks fine to me, I guess. And then try to remember the other characters. We got this one character who has this, like, device things on her ears, kind of like little plugins or something like that, where she has the ability to actually hear things through, like, the wall, through, like, the little earplugs on her ears or something like that, which is, like, okay, it's kind of weird, but very useful ability. Then we got the AKA Best Waifu. We have Suyu, which this frog-like girl powers, and she even goes ribbit ribbit. She looks pretty fine. I think I'm going to like seeing her in the future, so... Yeah, so we get, you know, introduced to most of these students, and they look pretty hype as hell, so I just definitely can't wait to see more of them. Now, when it comes to the character development, oh wait, I forgot one more person that intrigued me, was the Invisible Girl, which was, I believe her name was Toru um, Hagakuri, yeah, Toru, I think her name was like Toru, yeah, Toru, yeah. Um, the Invisible Chick, um, very funny stuff, especially when she was trying to change, like, in front of her team, and like, ah, don't look. And then I believe it was that dude I was mentioning, uh, Ma Mashi, uh, uh, God, what was his name? Mashi Ryo, Mashi Ryo, I think his name was, yeah. And it's like, well, you're pretty much just technically not even visible at all, so I wouldn't be able to see anything regardless. Lol. So anyways, yeah. So then the very last thing about the episode is the character development when it comes to not when it comes to pretty much um Kucha uh Kaichan. When it comes to Kaichan, oh my god. Oh my god. Bakugo's character development Kaichan, oh my god, his character development went through the roof. Like he has got the most insane amount of pride in him. He really wants to be the one to actually surpass All Might. And he says that, you know what, you don't have to tell me all this shit. You don't have to tell me that, oh, because your cork, you know, like your cork is borrowed, you know, for some powers or whatever. Like, you don't need to tell me any of that shit. You don't need to tell me. I knew I fucking lost. Like, it's pretty obvious you're stronger than I am. You know what to do with the ice? Yeah, he's stronger than I am. And I, and it's not fair. It's bullshit. I have the most recognition to be the surpassable hero to be the one combined with All Might. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen because I'm outstaged by you guys, pretty much. And the way they actually played out his pride was actually really nice in this episode. Very nice character development. Especially, it looks like he was about to cry, too. Because All Might really tried to comfort him as well. Like, when it comes to, you know, his so-called, um... Uh, pride. Kind of like Vegeta in a way, sort of. Like, we kind of got like a Vegeta moment, sort of. Kind of, when it comes to, you know, his character. Like, he kind of reminds me, like, not so much of Sasuke, but more like Vegeta. Not so much of Sasuke. I would say it's more like Vegeta sense than a lot of people compare this to, like, Naruto and Sasuke. Or just the Sasuke character. But to me, he kind of reminds me more like Vegeta in a way. Not so much of a Sasuke, because he wouldn't, unless... For some reason, he does become that. I mean, don't spoil me if he does. I'm just saying, like, down the line where he's going to betray, like, the fucking Hero Association or some shit like that. And then, you yeah, know, it's going to be Naruto all over again. Which, you know, yeah. Which, this is all I'm saying. So, anyways, yeah. And I really did like, um, Ucha um Okako's really funny, um, line where it's like, you know, the fight between men or the fated battle between men was actually really funny. So, yeah, this episode... Oh, yeah, by the way. That foreshadowing at the end, though. That foreshadowing, man. Keep your eye out for that foreshadowing. Oh, my God. That shit was so cool. The same villains we saw from the opening are actually present. Fucking finally is about damn time. And they actually look really cool. I like the one dude who's like a bartender who kind of looks like that flame dude from... Have you ever guys played the video game Undertale? Um, what's his name? Um, Grilby? Yeah, Grilby. Where it's the... At the uh, the restaurant, Grillbees, yeah, the owner. That's what he looks like, and that was really cool design. I like the bartender dude. I look like the crow looking dude that got like a fucking brain popping out of him. And there was this other guy I forget. Oh no, the dude that has his face covered. Yo, I heard mad people told me that dude plays a very, 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 very big role in the future chapters of the manga. I don't know what it is exactly because again, I'm still fresh new to the table. Don't really know. 
but I heard from a lot of people they were very hyped when they saw him because he plays a very, very, very important big role later down the line of the series. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm pretty hyped for that. So with that ending involved, I'm going to give the episode a 4.5 out of 5, making it a great episode. Very great setup episode for the other car uh, the other students' quirks. Very nice. Really like the character development for Kachan and Deku as well. Very nice stuff right there. Very touching moment. And what made it even so better with the icing on the cake would be the foreshadowing at the end, which I think was actually really, really cool as hell. Oh my god. But the only thing I guess I just have to complain about is the whole thing when it comes to recap. Oh my god. The first two to three minutes was nothing but bit recap. Oh my god. The amount of recap they use in this episode. Like, not like One Piece standards, but it's just I wasn't a big fan of the whole recap stuff that we got at the beginning. It's like, Okay, I mean, if you would have showed us that last little grudge thing from the last episode, that would have been cool, but no. You have to show us, like, at least two to three minutes, plus the opening, which I had to skip. So I was like, what, in the four-minute mark? So I'm like, really? So that was my biggest a little tiny little nitpick, but it's still a complaint that they have to keep you. And I understand it only has 91 chapters, so I understand you have to dumb it down a notch and not make it too canon material, which I do have a feeling that they're probably right that the series Sally might only be 13 episodes, which I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm really hoping this shit is at least 24 episodes, because if it's only 13, that really sucks. Because you know what this means, guys? If we're on episode 8, this is some bullshit. If it's 13 episodes, we're probably going to have, like, what? Only, like, 5 episodes left only? So, I'm really hoping that that's not the case. I'm hoping that shits are bullshit rumors, and we actually are going to extend it. Because this shit needs to be extended, because... Now there's all these heroes with these quirks, and it looks like just from the preview, and um, when it comes to um, Tenya, oh my god, Tenya, man, Tenya. Tenya is going to be in the So yeah, very nice stuff right there. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of this week's episode of My Hero Academia, episode number 8, and I will see you guys next week for episode number nine and i'm really hoping is it really true that we're only going to get 13 episodes of this because this can't be for real because we only got like after this maybe like five episodes left i don't want it to end so soon like don't do this to me please i really kind of want to see more of this now I'm, I'm really hoping that and then what the fuck am i gonna have in the summer well maybe i guess besides berserk to review but Jeez, like everything I'm reviewing is pretty much ending. You know, MLPs, well, not ending, but it's a hiatus season break. It's on a break. Sound Station Classroom is going to go bye bye. It's going to end. I mean, yeah, I still have JoJo Fridays, which, okay, I can do that. The chapters are just obviously usual, the chapters. Unless Torical does, God forbid, end. And it's just, whatever, you get what I mean. I'm still here to stay. So, anyways, so this is the Ninja Reviewer sending out. Peace, soul, love, chicken grease and the sky is the limit okay so i gotta get going i actually gotta go to bed actually so yeah so i'll catch you guys next week so yeah sorry i wrap this up real quick so yeah bye bye